continental. What do we know about continental? Yes. So it's going to be from land. Um, and what kind of moisture would you guess would be from land? Pretty dry. Yeah, this one's going to be pretty dry. So we can combine these words to make some real life examples. Like we might have a maritime tropical. Air mass. Um, we could have a continental polar air mass. All right, now to figure out what these mean, we need to know two more words. We got to know what is polar. So polar would be cold. Where are we going to find polar? Near the poles. Good. All right, so near poles. And you know I'm visual, so I got to draw it. Poles would be top and bottom. All right, and you guys already mentioned the poles are usually cooler because they're getting less direct light, as we mentioned in our bell work today. Um, and then tropical. Where are we going to find tropical? Uh, near, near equator. Yes, very good. All right, so we have near the equator, and this one is that belt that divides the earth. Right there. That's the equator. And you guys said what kind of temperature would we expect? Warm, hot. So um, another example for some real life ones, we could have a maritime polar. Um, and then we could also have a continental tropical. So I wanted to give you the four possible combinations. So that real life example, if you look at them, those are the only four different combinations that we can get. So if we break down maritime tropical, Let's think about what would be happening in that air mass. If it's maritime, we know it's what? Moist. Moist. And if it's tropical, we know it's going to be what? Warm. Good. All right, what about continental polar? Continental would be dry and cool. So we can match up these words to figure out what kind of air mass it is, and we can actually predict what the weather will be like based on just those words alone. Now, here's where it gets crazy. We know when hot and cold meet, that is when we get a front. That's when weather starts to happen. This is when it gets crazy. So the front is the boundary where two air masses meet. And this is where weather occurs. Anyone still need the chart? Okay, I don't see any hands. Let's do a little scoochie. All right, so it's kind of weird to think that a front is where these two air masses meet, and it's a warm and cool is usually where we get weather. Well, the same thing happens for a warm front and a cold front. It's a cold air mass and a warm air mass, but the way they approach each other, um, if one comes in gently or one comes in strong, that tells you what kind of front it's going to be. So the two types of fronts, we have a warm front, the symbol for this is going to be like little water droplets and these little curving lines. All of this shows you the direction it's heading. Now, I like to think of these as like little water droplets. And then cold fronts. What's going to happen to my little water droplets when it gets cold? They're going to be spiky like little icicles because it's cold now. So now our little nice water drops are icicles. And again, the direction of the curve and the little pointy spiky things will tell you it's heading in this direction for this one specifically. So that does indicate direction. Now, I like to do the picture first and then the description because for me, since I'm visual, it kind of helps me to see it before we write it. So, the one that we're going to get the snow day from, do we remember which, which kind of front would give us the severe weather? Cold. Cold. Yeah, cold is fierce. So, warm front is going to be, basically, we have a cold air mass, and we learned from yesterday's bottle trick that the cold air mass is going to be high or low pressure, usually. High. These are not going to want to move very much because they're very dense. Um, and like Romeo and I were talking a second ago, like second law, more mass, more force, it's going to be hard to move this one. So what's going to happen is it's almost going to look like a finger is crawling up over this one. Um, we're going to have the warm air mass just kind of comes in and gently 
is going to rise over the top. So we have a warm air mass that looks kind of funky. And it's just kind of gently creeping over the top of the cold air mass. Because remember that cold air mass is very dense. It doesn't want to move. Now, wherever cold and hot meet, we're always going to get some kind of precipitation. Um, but this one is going to be more of like a gentle precipitation where we have like stratus clouds. If you've ever seen a stratus cloud, they're kind of long and skinny. And this kind of um, precipitation, you can get rain or snow, but it's going to be gentle. So it's kind of think, weird to think that you can get a, a snowstorm and a warm front. You can, but it's going to be like a gentle kind of storm. So let's clarify warm front. Warm air stretches over cool air, causing steady and light rain or snow. Let me get my hand out of the way there. All right, so for a warm front, we have warm air stretches over cool air causing steady light and rain and snow. Okay, now cold front is totally opposite. This one, we already talked about what crushed our bottle yesterday. What kind of air crushed it? Cold air, very good. James, you've got something up here. All right, so the cold air mass is now coming in strong. On the second picture, we have our cold air mass. Draw a couple of arrows, because remember with our force diagrams, the bigger the arrows, the more arrows, that shows the more what? Force, the more intensity, yes. All right, so this one is literally pushing that warm air mass up and out the way. It says, get out of my way because I'm coming through. Warm air mass is pushed up and over. Now this kind of a front, we get the big puffy clouds, the cumulus clouds, and this is where we get crazy, severe, kind of scary weather. So we need a fierce lightning bolt there. Make your lightning bolt as crazy as you like. We need some crazy heavy rain, so we want really, really heavy storms obvious in this one. Okay, so to recap a cold front for this one, we said the cold air mass is pushing the warm air mass out of the way. Uh-huh. Cold air mass pushes the warm air out of the way. And this is causing severe storms. It could be rain or snow associated with this one, but this is going to be like, if it snows, we're going to get like inches. It's going to be lots of accumulation. Um, it's not usually the most exciting kind of a storm because it's a little scary. All right, questions on warm front or cool front before we move on to the last thing for today. Okay, now we talked about high pressure and low pressure yesterday. The thing that you need to remember is that the high pressure and low pressure areas in the jet stream basically pushes all these air masses around. So remember back to yesterday, the high air pressure um, was going to be the outside of the room where it was what kind of temperature did we associate with high pressure? Was it hot or cool? Cool. So cool is going to be high air pressure. And then warm, yes, would be which one? Low. Now, if you remember thinking back inside of that bottle yesterday where it was nice and warm because I threw that match in, did we notice anything inside of the bottle? I heard some gas, right? We had some vapor. So that would be a cloud. We actually made a cloud in a bottle. So we would get rainy weather or cloudy. But that's going to be the low pressure area where it's warm. And then outside where it was cool, we had high pressure air would be clear skies. It would be nice and clear. It was not as humid in the classroom as it was in the bottle. Now I have a couple tricks to help you remember this. All right. The tricks are high, heavy, cool, and cranky. 
Low light, warm, and welcoming, which sounds like a lot really fast. So let's break it down. What do you think the symbol is for um, high air pressure? H. Circle it. Now with high pressure, yesterday we said winds blow from what? High to low. So that means with this one, is the air coming towards it or away from it? With high Boy. pressure, it's going to go which way? Boy. Pushing it away. Very good. Draw your arrows. Away. So the saying goes for high pressure. This is high. And remember, because it's high air pressure, if it's cool, is it more or less dense? More. This is heavy air. It's very heavy because it's very dense. Now, it's also, what kind of temperature did we say for higher pressure? Cool. And then it's cranky. Because remember, what did those cold air masses do? They push out of the way. They're kind of fussy. They want what they want right when they want it. Sounds like a younger brother or sister, doesn't it? All right, now, low air pressure. What's our symbol going to be? L, circle it. Now, with a low air pressure, if winds blow from what? High to low, then now, with a low pressure, the winds are going to be going which way? Towards it. This is where we get tornadoes and hurricanes are in these low pressure areas because all the wind is um, kind of sucked into this area. Remember when I opened the bottle yesterday? What happened? It sucked in. Okay, that's why these um, big storms can be kind of weird. Um, now, low if it's um, going to be warm, how's the density going to be? More or less dense. So that means it's going to be light air mass. It's going to be light air. And it's going to be what kind of temperature for low? Temperature would be warm. And then this one is kind of welcoming. It's not going to push you out the way. It's kind of give you um, like a nice little hug. It's very friendly-ish. So that's my trick for high air pressure and low air pressure. Any questions on that? All right, we got two minutes. If you can flip back to your closure, does anyone need more time before I flip? All right. Back to our closure, 21st, please. Now, there's something that I didn't mention about um, these fronts that I want to make sure we are noticing with this little map here. All right, so... For our closure, it says identify the frontal system expected for the northwestern part of the United States. Well, first of all, we got to think, where's the northwest? What corner would that be on this map? Yep, top left. So look in that top left corner. What are we noticing up here? What kind of a front would we say that is? Yes, it's got icicles. We know this is a cold front. Now, one thing I wanted you to see with the cold front is look at the temperatures in front of those little spiky things. I see, yes, 82, 85, 62, 59, 52. Look behind the front now. What is the temperature like? 41. So this is interesting. Does this work with our low pressure, high pressure trick? We said low should be what? Warm, and it is. And high should be what? Cool, and it is. So this is the trick I wanted you to see. In front of the cold uh, front, it's actually what kind of temperature? Warm. So where is it going to be cold in the cold front? Behind it. That's the trick. Okay? You've got to remember that with the front, the cold air, or whatever kind of front it is, it's going to be behind it is where you're going to experience whatever kind of front that is. So this one's cold. Cold will be behind. If this was warm, then it would be warm behind. So we can expect... A cold front is going to pass through. Cold front pushes the warm air into the low pressure areas. And so we see behind that front, the temperature will decrease. Any questions on that? Okay, that brings everything together. So if there are no questions, you're welcome to pack up. We got about one minute to spare. Whew, we did it. Nice.